Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. He said he was working late on Valentine's, but his stepsister sent me a video of them together. I threw his excuses back in his face and walked out. I, female 29, have been married to my husband Mark, 32, for four years and we've always had a good relationship. Both of us came from toxic family dynamics so this relationship has been our sanctuary and one of open and honest communication. For me, I have a lot of trauma associated with cheating since my dad left my mom for somebody else and for Mark. His father remarried and he has, in his words, the world's worst relationship with his stepsister Laura and no relationship with his parents. It's so bad between him and his parents that I've never interacted with them. They weren't invited to our wedding either. I mean, from the little interaction I've had with his sister, he is NC with his parents, I could see why. While she was exceptionally pretty and smart, there was an aloof vibe from her and that put me off immediately, and to make things worse. There was barely any interaction between Mark and Laura, so I was the one making small talk and trying to reduce the awkwardness in the air. In the four years we've known each other, I think Laura has texted or interacted with me about five times, mostly on Snapchat. All I know about her is that she was married but got divorced a few weeks into the marriage and after that, basically lived like an isolated princess. Mark is also really cold with his sister, but with me, he's the most romantic man ever. We always use words of affirmation, cuddle a lot, and make time for each other during anniversaries, birthdays, and valentines. I'll be honest, as bad as Mark's sister is, she's his only family link that I know of. However, this valentines. Mark told me a week in advance that he has a large project going on which would take up so much of his time and energy that he didn't think that he would be able to make me able excited and happy with his half-assed efforts on valentines. So he told me that on the 14th of February, he he'd be working late, but we could always have a special day later on in the month. I won't lie, I was quite beaten up about this, but I didn't let it show and I respected his decision. Mark does work in a really high-pressure environment, a consultant for a big accounting firm, and at other times, I have seen him get completely swept away by work. It's just that this time, the timing was really bad. Nevertheless, I made him a cute little package on the morning of the 14th, his favorite snacks. A little teddy we keep in our bedroom usually and a handwritten note to cheer him up during work. Then, I took the majority of the day as a self-care day. I went to the mall, bought some nice clothes, and also got a mani-pedi. I got home around 6 p.m. and Mark still wasn't home. Then 7 p.m., then 10 p.m. by this point, I was getting really worried and tried calling him a few times. I didn't get any response and was nervously checking my phone for a call back every few minutes. Then around 11.30, I got a snap from Laura and I, don't know how to put this mildly, but it was a clip of her and my husband getting it on and it was captioned, it's time you knew, he's mine bitch. Even worse, in the background, I could see the care package that I'd made for him thrown on the floor, almost intentionally placed in a frame. There were so many thoughts going through my head when I heard this and I didn't even know how to react at that moment. I remember crying and walking out of the house to stay at a hotel. From there, I called one of my closest friends, Ella, and asked her if I could stay at her place for the next few weeks and told her what I had seen. She was understanding, patient, and most of all pissed at Mark while I was at the hotel. I went to the bar and got a little tipsy. At that moment, I was feeling distraught and just wanted to forget everything. I'm not going to lie. I also wanted to get back at Mark and I couldn't get the image of him and his stepster having an affair together like you, just you. At the bar, I ended up picking up this attractive looking man and taking him back to my room. I know I shouldn't have and I was still technically married but my trust was so badly betrayed that at this point there was no option but divorce for me. I had a one night stand then woke up to a bunch of messages from Mark asking me where I was. I texted back, Laura can have you, as simple as that. For what felt like ages, he didn't reply to the message and then I got, I can explain, just come home, and it isn't what it looks like. As if he'd taken every generic text out of the cheater's playbook, I left him on read and went over to Ella's place to gather my bearings. After that, I decided to call an attorney and go back to the house to get a few more clothes. When I got there, Mark was at home and fell on his knees to try and get me to stay. Then I asked him what his excuse was. Get this, he says that Laura sent an edited photo to spite him and our marriage. I remember the video as clear as day, and that wasn't any Photoshop magic. I asked him for proof, if he even had any. Silence from him. I was honestly getting pissed and told him that his lame excuses weren't having any effect on me. I texted Laura back as well, in front of him, texting, yep, all yours. Finally, I left. That was a week ago and Mark has been served with divorce papers. Ella and my friend group have been ridiculously supportive and from what I know, Mark is just living alone at his house. Although with my lawyer, that's probably going to be my house. 
although I still feel a little guilty about the one night stand that I had. Was it warranted for me to simply have a drunken night while I was still married? I know that it shouldn't be a big issue for me, but due to my parents and the trauma I have, marriage has always been a kind of big thing for me, and that's why it's taking such a toll on me. Laura responded to my text with a long message saying this was a long time coming and that it was for the best. I don't even want to know how long this has been going on and I honestly couldn't care less. This whole story feels like it's something I'd read about on BuzzFeed. I'm getting a little overwhelmed by it all, and my replies may also be slow, but all I need to know right now, Reddit, is Ada for the one night stand. Update 1. It's been a few months since the incident and so much crazy stuff has come to light. First off, I got a Facebook message from a man with the same last name as Mark Let's Say X because I don't want anyone accidentally my accidento, my identity claiming to be his father, and he told me that he was sorry that Mark had hurt me as he did, and in fact he had only recently found out about the fact that Mark was married, that I was his wife through extended family and a lot of digging on his part. He then asked if I would be comfortable meeting with him and Mark's stepmother. I obliged and I went over to visit them about an hour's drive away. So Mr. Shex had remarried when Mark was around 18 and his wife also had a daughter from a previous marriage, that being Laura, when they were around 20. The parents found out that Mark and Laura had been hooking up and this was crazy for them. Not budging a bit, Mark's dad basically said that if they continued this behavior, he would go and see with them. Nothing like what Mark had told me. From then on, they didn't know much about what Mark and Laura got up to as they both moved out and didn't keep in touch. From what I can make out, Mark married me to have a front of normalcy while he could continue getting with Laura and the ex-husband Laura had. He was in the same situation as me, and he also found out eventually, and that's how they got divorced. I'm not going to lie, all of this made sense and little weird things Mark did make sense now. The work trips he had taken previously, they were probably to meet Laura the way Laura acted with me. It was to make sure I never got too close to her. But one thing doesn't make sense then. If these two had planned it out so carefully, why exactly did Laura send that snap? I don't have too many people close to them, so maybe it'll always remain a mystery. Update 2 well, that didn't stay a mystery for long, haha. I gave Mr. X Mark's contact number and he called his son to find out about everything that had happened. Despite wanting to never speak to him again, I think he felt a sense of obligation to me for the way I had been treated by his son. He was a real gentleman, I'll admit unlike his son. On the call, Mark tried to push all the blame on Laura, saying that she had been getting jealous of all the time he was spending with me and that she recorded him that night without his consent. Crazy stuff, I know. This guy has the balls to drop all the blame and try to make himself into a victim. Then Mark's dad unfortunately let slip that he had spoken to me as well and was fully on my side in this incident. So he reached out to me again and told me the same story that he told his father, that Laura had been a jealous and crazy manipulator and he was coerced into having an affair with her. I wasn't having any of it and I told him as much and he showed up outside of yeah, still there, although looking for an apartment at the moment, and tried to serenade me to take him back. I don't know why he thinks he's God's gift to women, that I would simply take him back since he has made a grand gesture all of a sudden. I've applied for a restraining order, and at this point, I only see him during court hearings. ESH, but you're not that much of an age. I do get why you had that one-night stand, but to me, cheating is cheating. I feel like you could have just had some fun after serving divorce papers. Also, if Mark ended up finding out, it might help his divorce case. So that's also another factor you should have kept in mind, girl. Denna. Oh, this is so creepy. I can't believe they've been doing this for a whole decade, basically, and it seems super toxic to begin with. I feel so bad for you, OP, and this would be tough to heal from. I hope you attend therapy for this. It helps find closure. Next story. I, 24, female, have recently bought my own home. Mom insisted I invite my brother, 40, male, and his family over to celebrate. For background, my brother hasn't amounted to anything in his life, despite my parents supporting him through their financial highs and abysmal lows. I remember when he found out he wouldn't be getting any inheritance from my parents, and the rest would be divided up between my nephew from his first marriage and myself. Because according to my parents, we have both done something with our lives, while his bad decisions have left him in a rent trap and a massive amount of unnecessary debt. I want to also mention that for a long time, my parents barely managed to keep a roof over our heads and asked that my brother help make ends meet, which he later admitted he only did because he thought it would be worth it when they die, and he inherits the place. Fast forward to last night, and I'm showing them around, it's a big place and a little fancy, I will admit, but I know I deserve the life I have now because throughout my teenage years, 
I had to give up my scholarship money to help pay off his debts, my free time and study time to look after his son, and I even had to drop out of high school because I was skipping class to work. That's how bad things were, but I went to a trade school and got three diplomas in engineering and programming before finishing my degree two years ago, all while juggling a full-time job so I could have experience on my resume when I graduated. After dinner, my brother found me on the balcony and I had to pretend I wasn't hiding from him. He started asking about what my plan was now that I had a house and very little of the mortgage left to pay off. I was honest and said I was probably going to work abroad, travel, and save for retirement. He asked me where all it goes when I die, and I told him his son, since he's hardworking and deserves it the most. He got angry and asked why not him and his family, to which I told him that I had no interest in leaving anything for his family because he has no interest in me and our parents, aside from what he can get from us. His wife came in screaming, calling me selfish for not helping my brother and my very own niece, to which I replied, I'm going to tell you the same thing you'll hear from your landlord when you no doubt fail to make rent for the third month in a row. Get out of my house. Mom heard this and yelled at me before saying we both ruined what was supposed to be a lovely night. His wife said my elitism and selfishness ruined the night and not them for asking for a little help, since I clearly could or at least pay for their daughter to go to a private school and secure her future. She's three. After they left, Mom said I should at least consider helping and that he can't help the situation that he's in. I told her that if she really doesn't see why that's a bad idea, then she should leave as well. And now neither of my parents are answering my calls. Am I the a-hole? Edit, there's been a lot of confusion in regard to my qualifications, my scholarship, and my timeline. A diploma in my country is a year-long qualification that's maybe two tiers below an actual bachelor's degree, hence why I said trade school. So I have three trade diplomas that I completed in three years, age 18 to 19. My college debt isn't treated the same as the rest of the world. Students have the option to pay up front or take 0% interest government loans that you repay via fair, and only if you're earning over a certain threshold. It did not affect my credit score. My state government also offered first home buyers grants for people under a certain age to help young people afford their first homes. I've also received many threatening messages asking how I've graduated but posted about looking for work or where on campus to study months ago. Let me be clear, the work I'm currently in is experiencing a huge shortage of skilled professionals and the jobs that pay the most for people with limited experience in my country tend to be FIFO or fly-in fly-out jobs where you have to fly out to a mine site in the middle of nowhere for sometimes up to weeks on end and maybe one week back home. It's hot, the weather conditions are usually extreme, and it's lonely, hence why not many people could do it for too long. I'm studying for my master's when I'm back at home. I didn't think that it mattered enough to post, but after getting threatened and having my previous posts stalked, I want to clarify that I am doing my master's part-time so I can work abroad instead of being limited to doing specialist work in the desert, or at least find a job in my city that pays just as well. And to the people asking why I would buy a house if I plan on living abroad, why not? If I can afford it, why not? What if I want my own place to visit during holidays when I'm homesick? What if things don't work out abroad, why not? You've already put yourself in a hole before on his account. You're doing well for yourself now. Yet your high school and college life should have been way different because of his terrible decisions and lack of responsibility. And now he wants to make you financially responsible for him again. And what do you get in return? Undying and unconditional love from a deadbeat? Please. Your parents are biased because he's their son, their own flesh and blood. A close friend had to how his parents sugarcoated all of his older brother's faults until recently when they finally woke up to the effects of that brother's behavior. It's time for our folks to open their eyes. Your brother is a leech. He cares for no one but himself, as long as he doesn't have to put any effort in. Tan, sorry about your parents, but they must first come around to your perspective in order for you to continue your relationship with them. Tan, first, congratulations on being able to enjoy the results of all your hard work. Your brother is certainly a piece of work and not in a good way. If you don't have a good security system with cameras that you can check remotely, you might wish to consider it. My concern is when you are working abroad or on vacation, your brother will find out and if you still have the house, try to move himself and his family in. You would then come home at best to a trashed house and at worst, not be able to evict them. And anyone who tries to put you back in the box of helping out your brother because he is family should be invited to help him out themselves. You have already sacrificed enough of your life and money to the golden child. Time he figures out how to support himself and his family. Duh, they are financially abusive people and you have every right not to allow them to take further advantage of you.
Your parents were wrong to allow you as a teenager to take on any of this burden to your detriment. You had to drop out of high school, not just because of your brother, but because of your parents. You really do deserve all the financial security and happiness. They have a lot of nerve trying to come into your house and demand you once again sacrifice yourself for them. Next thing they will demand is you let them move in, at which point they will completely take over your life. Do not do this ever. Saying no to them is the best thing you can do. If your parents are once again choosing them over you, that's on their heads. Don't let them guilt you into giving up your dreams again. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.